tech thief. I just love technology. If you don't have that burning in you to know how things work, then I can't explain it to you. It's, it's like a drug addict for somebody who's not drug addicted. Peterson stole credit card numbers, even broke into a financial institution, all by computer. Hack supported my lifestyle. A lifestyle interrupted by more than three years in prison. One of the longest sentences ever served a hacker. David Schindler was the federal prosecutor. Justin Peterson was one of the more complicated and uh, unique hackers that I'd ever come upon. In part, a very bright guy, clearly he had skill sets that a lot of folks don't have, um, and also wasn't your typical sort of nerdy kid hanging out up in the attic. Peterson says his passion to master the toys of technology began as a boy growing up in Nebraska. Probably when I was eight or nine years old, I started playing with a telephone. At the age of, I believe, 11 or 12, I essentially tapped my first telephone. I was at a friend's house, and I took a transistor radio speaker, and I... Uh, took the two wires and connected it across the telephone line and uh, my friend's mother was speaking on the phone and of course I could hear what they were saying and then by the time I was 13 or 14 I was you know climbing telephone poles in my neighborhood and uh, attaching my telephone set to the lines to see which ones did what. In 1980 at the age of 20 Peterson says he got his first computer and dialed in to go online. I was trolling around on the information superhighway back when it was a dirt road at the time, most people did not know the Internet even existed. I didn't leave the house <laughs> for weeks. <laughs> and uh, there were a few networks that we could get on and uh, communicate with other people like myself. When he moved to Los Angeles, Peterson became a party boy by night, a hacker by day. I had access to a lot of databases for a while there. And uh, we were s I was selling the information to a private investigator. I could uh, go back to the DMV, get your address, go back on a telephone company computer, get your phone number, go to TRW, get your credit report. So uh, with just a name, you can get somebody wired. By the late 1980s, Peterson joined a small gang of hackers that included Ron Austin. At the time, I was impressed with him because a lot of people seemed to know him. He seemed to be very big in the, the Hollywood crowd. Austin, Peterson, and another famous hacker, Kevin Poole, joined forces to crack the telephone system. Poulson gave Peterson access to the phone company manuals. I live in the apartment overlooking this parking lot. From the balcony of his old apartment, Peterson could see the rear entrance to this telephone company building. Just one of the phone facilities, Peterson says, he and Poulson broke into together. We were, you know, uh, picking the locks and making uh, pack bell ID cards, and we've been in uh, literally dozens of central offices. And we'd go in in the middle of the night, there's nobody in there, and, uh, you know, study all the equipment. Um, play with the terminals, try to understand how everything's laid out. Once inside the phone system, they learned how to control telephone company computers through the phone company's own lines. That opened the door to a whole new world. All your life as a hacker, you're on the outside trying to figure out what's on the inside. And now you're on the inside looking at everything and you can feel and touch it. It was, it was, uh, it was very exciting. Armed with the power to control phone company computers, they learned how to cheat on radio station call-in contests. The radio station contest, frankly, was quite ingenious. Uh, Polson and uh, Peterson and Austin uh, figured out a way, frankly, to seize control of the telephone lines leading to not just any radio station, but frankly anybody. It's almost like the holy grail of hacking, particularly from the freak hacking standpoint, to have control over phone lines like that, to be able to monitor phone lines. It's an, it's an Tremendous power. From 102.7. When radio stations had the 10th caller wins a poor, 10th caller wins $10,000 contest, they could seize control of the radio station telephone lines, allow nine calls to go through, at that point filter out all other calls and make themselves the 10th caller. The conspiracy won uh, two Porsches and about $50,000 in cash and several trips to uh, Hawaii. Crimes like Schindler says convinced authorities to beef up their efforts to fight a new breed, computer criminals. We recognized years ago that if we didn't start gearing up, getting law enforcement agents, FBI agents, Secret Service agents, who could both talk the talk, uh, understand how to investigate and move forward, uh, we would have a problem. By 1990, the authorities were closing in on Peterson. 
When police arrested him there, they found his computer. On it, credit card numbers he'd stolen right out of the credit card company's own dates. I have a terrible memory, you know, so I had to have everything that I ever did on file recorded on, on paper or on, on hard drive. So when I was arrested, they had everything. Everything I'd ever done was, it was an open book. Schindler and the FBI brought Peterson back to Los Angeles, where he was offered a deal. Become an informant, work for the FBI, do less time in jail. The information he had that was of most interest to us was uh, the ability to help us find Ron Austin, who had gone underground. I just wanted to believe that the guy was uh, my friend. I, I felt very bitter by him. Peters also led them to the computer of Kevin Polson, his former partner in crime, who was then sentenced to more than four years in prison after admitting to computer fraud and zeroing in on FBI wiretaps. No, no honor amongst thieves. Certainly, the credo applies with hackers. Out on bail and working for the FBI, Peterson continued his life in the fast lane. Soon, he was up to his old tricks. After two years of working for the Bureau, uh, I was tired of it and went back to hacking. We got evidence that uh, he was engaged in, or might have engaged in, some additional credit card fraud. Uh, we brought him to the offices here with his lawyer and uh, we confronted him. Peterson made a run for it. I asked to step up for a, uh, have a conference with my attorney, hopped in the elevator, went down to the lobby, and then just very quickly left the building. And as I was getting a bus here real quickly, to get, get, get away as quickly as I could, I looked out the back window and I saw the U.S. Marshals standing out in front of the building looking around for me. Peterson went on the lamp. I became a fugitive and I said, well, you know, I just need a lot of money. I need to get out of the country. In 1994, Peterson used everything he'd learned to try his boldest crime yet, an online heist. Once again, Peterson says, he broke into a telephone company building and hooked up his computer to the phone lines of a commercial lending company. I tapped the network connection and watched all the uh, passwords flying by the people using the system, literally thousands of connections at, at one time. Um, uh, logged all those into my computer, went back and reviewed them all and got the codes that the bank uses to transfer money. So what did you do? I uh, issued a transfer for $150,000 to an account I had control over. To avoid detection, Peter and an associate created a diversion. They needed it in part to make sure that there weren't operators on scene at Heller watching as the wire was going through. My, my associate decided to phone in a bomb threat on that, and uh, we had planned to move a lot more money after that. Like how much? Uh, seven digits. Mm -hmm. Or as they like to say in the 90s, uh, two commas. <laughs> the money transfer was stopped when the financial institution involved became suspicious. But who was behind it remained a mystery until Peterson was arrested nearly a year after running from the courthouse. And then went through, again, went through my computer and saw what I had been doing. In 1995, Peterson was sentenced to more than three years in jail. The judge said Peterson had done more damage with a computer than many criminals accomplish with a crowbar. Released in April 1997, he violated the term of his release and became a fugitive hunted by federal marshals. Soon, Peterson was caught again, served time, and finally released year. You're proud of what you did? No, I'm not proud of what I did. No. I'm proud of, you know, accomplishing something and pushing the limits of technology and pushing, you know, going beyond what I was allowed to do. This time around, Peterson says he's playing by the rules, earning money the legal way as an internet consultant for X-rated websites. I'm trying to put something a little more classy together than your typical internet smut, but uh, I'm in the process of putting together a uh, adult entertainment network talking about uh, adult video on demand. Where customers will have to use credit cards. Why should people trust you? Well, I would think if something uh, hinky were to happen, uh, that I would certainly be very questioned very quickly. This is a mainstream operation. There's no room for that kind of nonsense. Protecting the Internet from hackers is the source of much hand-wringing among politicians and security experts right now, and for good reason. 
Cyber attacks are one of the fastest growing crimes in the nation, and law enforcement officials say technological advances make it nearly impossible to keep track of the problem. When we come back, tracing a digital trail, the hunt for some of the web's most wanted. Across the telephone line, and uh, my friend's mother was speaking on the phone, and of course I could hear what they were saying. And then by the time I was 13 or 14, I was, you know, climbing telephone poles in my neighborhood and uh, attaching my telephone set to the lines to see which ones did what. In 1980, at the age of 20, Peterson says he got his first computer and dialed in to go online. I was tech thief. I just love technology. If you don't have that burning in you to know how things work, then I can't explain it to you. It's, it's like a drug addict for somebody who's not drug addicted. Peterson stole credit card numbers, even broke into a financial institution, all by computer. Hack supported my life. I went around on the information superhighway back when it was a dirt road. At the time, most people did not know the Internet even existed. I didn't leave the house <laughs> for weeks. <laughs> and uh, there were a few networks that we could get on and uh, communicate with other people like myself. When he moved to Los Angeles, Peterson became a party boy by night, a hacker. Lifestyle. A lifestyle interrupted by more than three years in prison. One of the longest sentences ever served a hacker. David Schindler was the federal prosecutor. Justin Peterson was one of the more complicated and uh, unique hackers that I'd ever come upon. In part, a very bright guy. Clearly he had skill sets that a lot of folks don't have. Um, and also wasn't your typical sort of nerdy kid hanging out up in the attic. Peterson says his passion to master the toys of technology began as a boy growing up in Nebraska. Probably when I was eight or nine years old, I started playing with a telephone. At the age of, I believe, 11 or 12, I essentially tapped my first telephone. I was at a friend's house, and I took a transistor radio speaker, and I uh, took the two wires and connected it across.